everybody and god bless so just real quick charity is free she's roaming around a lot um she's got like a whole box of toys right now so you might hear a lot of different sounds anyways so i feel that the parable of the prodigal son has been used to defend one saved always saved so i want to go over what that parable means as i've said many times that the scriptures can have more than one meaning as long as they do not contradict the main point of the story is to show how we can come back to god from wherever we are and we can always come back to him but there is an underlying point and the underlying point is how how do we come back to god when the prodigal son decided to go back home he acknowledged his sin repented and humbled himself in Luke chapter 15, verses 18 through 19, it says, I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. So I believe this is a form of an apology as well. He is acknowledging his sin and he is humbling himself by saying, make me one of your hired servants. So he did not just go back home as he was when he left. Before he was living in sin and thought he did not need his father. So in other words, for us, living in sin and turning from God is pretty much how he was. And when he went back to his father, he wasn't like that anymore. He was a changed man. He had repented. He had humbled himself. He's different. So to me, that's against one saved, always saved. Because remember, he was saved when he was with his father and he left on his own so he was already saved when he was with his father and then he left so he's he's gone he's not saved anymore and he had to make that decision to come back home on his own if he did not make that decision i highly doubt his father would have left to go drag him and bring him back unchanged next we read how the father had compassion for him. Compassion, according to the dictionary online, means sympathetic pity and concern for the suffering or misfortunate of others. See, you can have compassion for people and not allow them back into your life. So just because he had compassion does not mean the father would have let him back in unrepented. In the next few verses, the son repents to him. The father just moves on to the party. I want to point out verse 24. The father says, For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. So in Romans chapter 6, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So I've heard this scripture be used before and it's been mistreated a lot. And I've heard people say that the wages of sin is death. So that means that, you know, um, certain sins lead to death. And it means that certain sins add up to hell. That this scripture clearly says for the wages of sin is death, not the wages of sin add up to death. No. So the little white lie you may have done and you never repented for, that could possibly lead you to going to hell. So when he's saying his son was dead, his son was living in sin, clear as day, and he's dead. So him being dead, how was the son dead if he was with the father in the beginning? Because according to people who believe in one saved, always saved, once you're saved, you're always saved, even if you go into sin. But he just said that his son was dead. So if this scripture backs up one saved, always saved, how could he have been dead if he was already saved in the beginning? See, when the son left, he became dead. He was already with his father in the beginning and left on his own and became dead. Let's see how Jesus feels about the spiritually dead. In Revelations chapter 3 verse 1, it says, And unto the angel of the church in Sardis, write these things, saith he, that hath the seven spirits of God. And the seven stars, I know thy works, that thou hast the name, that thou livest and art dead. The church of Sardis is spiritually dead. Later on in verse 5, Jesus says that those who overcome, he will not blot them out of the book of life. Therefore, if the son did not come back, he would have been blotted out of the book of life. So how could he have made it to heaven if his name would have been blotted out of the book of life, if he did not repent? 
remember he was saved in the beginning so real quick i already did a deeper study on the seven churches and i will put that link in the description box for you guys the last thing i want to point out is verse 31 the father is now talking to the other son who did not leave and he said unto him son thou art ever with me and all that i have is thine when we come to God fully repented, he does not bring up our faults or throw in our faces that we could fall from him. God treats us as his perfect children. So the father is doing the same to his son. In other words, I believe the father is saying to his son that he is always with him. That doesn't mean that he won't fall one day and it doesn't mean that he will. It just means that in this moment, you are with me and I love you. Like I was trying to point out that this parable definitely is, to me personally, a big thing that's against one saved, always saved. And I pray that you guys take this to prayer and I hope it made sense. God bless you all. Have a nice one. Fear of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit.